This video is an overview of the BAL AccuSlide system from Norco Industries. It will show you how the room functions compared to conventional slide outs and also service items as in replacing cables with the cable present and with the cable already missing. The AccuSlide system differs from conventional slide outs in the fact that it pulls in and pulls out. Conventional slide outs push the room out and pull the room in, usually from a device attached to the floor or the outside wall of the coach at the floor area. The AccuSlide uses eight cables, four attached to the inside corners, top and bottom, both left and right, and also the outside corners, top and bottom, left and right. As a result, you get a much smoother operating system where the room is actually controlled from eight points instead of just from two points at the base. Each side of the AccuSlide has four cables attached to it. They operate one side specific. One's right side and one's left side. On your right side, your bracketry should always have a purple and a green label. The green label is in, it says bottom and top. This is the cable that goes to the top of the room that brings the room in. This cable goes to the bottom of the room that brings the room in also. The out bracket takes the room out. Top cable out, bottom cable out. The same holds true for the left side of the room, only you'll have red and blue on your labels, a red out label and a blue in label. The AccuSlide uses two different motors. One is a high torque motor used on larger rooms and flush floor systems. It has a yellow zinc body. It also has a 11 tooth sprocket, so it develops more torque for those applications. All motors are warm gear motors and are self-locking, so when the room is not energized or the motor is not energized, the room cannot move in or out. The standard duty motor has a black painted body on the motor and not the gold zinc. There's also an emergency override shaft on the high torque motor at the gearbox, it's a half inch, and on the standard motor we have a quarter inch hex off the motor shaft on the back side for emergency operating of the room in or out. There's no need to unlock anything or disconnect any wiring to move the room manually. As the room operates, the in brackets will pass the out brackets as the room travels in. see the brackets pass each other as the in bracket is pulling the room in the out brackets are letting the cables out so the room can progress in. The system works as a bicycle or any motorized uh, chain driven uh, piece of machinery like a motorcycle or a bicycle where if the chain is too tight it will actually restrict the power of the machine or the bicycle. This slide out acts in the same way. If the chain is too tight or your cables are too tight on both sides, it will actually make the system more inefficient than more efficient. The AccuSlide system is made up of components of stainless steel cable, ball ends at the brackets that, that attach to the room are stainless steel, as well as the studs that connect to the adjustment brackets. The pulleys used in the AccuSlide system are all permanently lubricated ball bearing pulleys that have lubrication for life. There are a series of two pulleys at each location of each bracket in the power jam, as well as four pulleys in the corner pulley brackets. These pulleys are only there to guide the cable around corners. The tools used to repair or service an AccuSlide are the following. We recommend either a speed drive 3 8 and 7 16 box wrench or you can use a quarter inch drive deep well socket set along with a vice grip pliers. To replace a cable you'll need a crimping tool for 5 30 seconds cable, a stainless steel wire rope cutter, electrical tape, and sometimes picks also help in getting the cables to the right area. You also may need a screw gun or a drill to access the jam clamp to remove that and replace it back. If cable fails, normally it fails because the standoff bracket that holds the cable to the room is placed in the wrong location. If that's the case, you'll have to remove the bracket and that will take a drill. If a cable is broken or frayed and needs to be replaced, you'll need to order a cable replacement kit. The kit is comprised of a cable that is long enough to repair 
any slide out that BAL manufactures, along with a crimping ferrule, a new eye bolt to replace the threaded stud end of the original cable, a new foam anti-vibration block, a new nut, and also 24 inches of nylon mesh. If you have a situation where your cable is completely missing in the system or already pulled through the jam on the wall, this next process will get you through that to show you how to replace that cable even though there's not one there. The first thing that I do when preparing the cable to put into an existing hole where the cable was is I take, I take my needle nose pliers and I make a series of bends to, to bend a radius into the cable. This will help the cable follow around the pulley inside the jam so when I push it in there it will follow the right path. So I make a series of small bends to create a radius, something like this. Then I take the electrical tape and I tape the end of it off so the strands do not want to dig into the extrusion inside of the paint to stop the cable from getting pushed all the way through. In some cases, if you have a, a lithium grease available or something that uh, can help lubricate the cable, you can also use that so it slides through more easily. So I push the cable into the hole with the radius pointing in the direction of the motor, which is up in this case. Then I start the cable in the hole and push it through and angle it up and I keep pushing it until it goes all the way into the coach. Then I take the ball in and I place it back into the bracket with the keyhole and then place the grommet back in position to keep the cable in place. Now I'm ready to go inside the coach and pull the cable through. Pull the cable till it's nice and snug because it's already in the bracket outside so you know it's uh, hooked to the room. At this point in most coaches you would not have the jam clamp attached like this. It would be one piece that you'd remove before you got to this process. But in this case we're just going to sneak this way. Then you simply take the end, run it up through the corner pulley, under the tangs, and pull the cable tight. At this point, you'll remove the old cable. Now this will pull straight through the bracket, like that. You place the eye bolt in the bracket, start the nut, as in the process with the cable present, obviously. Take the ferrule, put it over the cable, through the eye bolt, back to the ferrule. Take all the slack out of it, pull it tight, and you're ready to crimp it off. It's best here, if you have this space, to remove the nut and bring the cable down to crimp it off because it may be simpler for your access. Take the crimper and crimp off your ferrule. Five 30 seconds cables requires three crimps to maintain the strength of the cable itself. If you're using a multi-crimper like I am in this case, Make sure you use the right slot, or else it will not crimp completely. If you drop the cable, go get it. <laughs> cut the excess cable off. Make sure you cut off the correct side. And just for the sake of keeping your fingers from getting holes poked into them, I tape off this section. Replace the stud into the bracket.
And at this point, you want to just basically snug it up to about finger tight because before we complete this, we want to check and make sure the cable alignment is proper at the bracket so we don't destroy or damage the new cable. 99% of all cable failures are caused by improperly placed standoff brackets by the installers. This causes a situation where the cable gets into a bind and the room may not close fully. It will look something like this. You notice how the room comes together, how the cable is not going through the hole in the jam anymore. It's being forced down through it. As a result, if this were a room that was running in on an outside cable, the cable would be in tension while the coach was going down the road causing a vibration, creating cable failure by fraying the cable one strand at a time. Once you replace the cable, you'll need to relocate that bracket. So we want to relocate this bracket so it'll loosen the bracket screws up. In some cases you may have to pull all screws out, they're all screwed in tight like that. And then raise the bracket to the proper level. And then re-secure the bracket. Notice how the cable goes straight in without bending or kinking. That's what you want. At this point, take your vice grip pliers, clamp them on the barrel of your eye bolt, and readjust the system with your wrench. The way the AccuSlide system works being that we're holding it from four corners is when the room is fully either in or out or past the center fulcrum point, the top will always seal better or easier than the bottom because the room wants to fall out naturally with the gravity. So it does not take as much force on top cables to get the room to seal. At that point, you put on your foam anti-vibration blocks and the job is done. This section covers cable replacement. Before we get into the cable replacement process, I think it's important to emphasize what causes cable failure in the first place. 99% of all cable failures are caused by improperly placed standoff brackets by the installers. This causes a situation where the cable gets into a bind and the room may not close fully. It will look something like this. You notice how the room comes together, how the cable is not going through the hole in the jam anymore. It's being forced down through it. As a result, if this were a room that was running in on an outside cable, the cable would be in tension while the coach was going down the road causing a vibration, creating cable failure by fraying the cable one strand at a time. Once you replace the cable that is frayed or damaged, you'll need to relocate that bracket. We'll cover that process as we finish the video. If a cable is frayed, usually because of the bracket being improperly placed, you'll see a kink in the cable and probably some frayed strands of the cable. I suggest in an inside situation like this, you run the room about four or five inches in so you have access to that cable. And then cut the cable where you know you have good clean, where there's no frayed strands. With the cable detached, hold the cable and run the room back out. Only as far as you have access to the adjustable brackets. Whether the cable you're repairing is an end cable or an out cable, it's best to remove the stud from the bracket before you cut the cable. By doing that, just remove the anti-vibration block and take the nut off the stud. Pull the stud out. Now you can pull your cable out and cut it off where it's a clean cut. At that point, I would suggest running the room all the way to its full outward position. Unless you have a bracket that's out of alignment, then you need to stop short. Now you can pull the cable towards you to get as much cable as you need.
to put on the, the wire mesh wrap. The nylon mesh that we use to repair cables with our cable kit is like a Chinese finger pull, it's compression type fitting. It's also a weave, so I recommend taping off the end of the cable that you cut to make sure that no loose strands come through the wire mesh and poke a hole in the finger because that will not feel good. Make sure you only put a small piece of tape so you don't have a big uh, bundle of tape at the end of the, of the wire. Then simply slide the mesh on to about halfway or as long as you have access to. In some cases you may not have that much cable to slide it on that far. Taping the wire mesh is important that you start about three inches down and as you wrap it, you wrap it in a long spiral so you do not wrap tape over tape but tape over the mesh so as not to build up the outside diameter of the cable any larger than you have to. The pulleys in the system are designed for this cable size and any larger size of cable may cause a jam in the pulleys when pulling this cable through. Then when done, pull it off and check to make sure that it's strong. Next, take the cable replacement cable and also wrap the end of it so as not to cause injury. Slide it into the wire mesh and repeat the process. It's best to make sure you butt the cables up to each other so as not to leave a gap in the wire mesh. It will pull through simpler and with less chance of going in the wrong direction. Then tape off this end as you did the other end with a long spiral pulling tight and terminating on the cable itself. At that point, you're ready to pull the cable through the system. Once the cables are attached to each other, simply take the cable and pull it through the opening and it will follow through all the pulleys until the head is locked into the bracket. The cable we're replacing in this particular unit is a trainer model, so the cable that we replaced was already a replaced cable. So again, you take the eye bolt, put it into the bracket, and place the nut on it. We recommend for long rooms where you have a lot of space between your brackets and your pulleys that you can put that on there about uh, three-fourths of an inch. This, this nut is seven-eighths of an inch long, so give yourself some threads. On, on shorter rooms, you'll want to use up more thread, but leave yourself about an inch of adjustment stud on the outside of the bracket. At that point, take your new replacement cable and you give yourself maybe a foot or so past the bracket and cut it off. Instead of untaping the portion you taped up, it'll save time just to cut it off. At this point, take the crimping ferrule, slide it over the cable, through the eye bolt, and back through the ferrule. Take all the slack out of the cable, pull it tight, and run the crimp barrel as close to the eye bolt as possible. It's best here, if you have this space, to remove the nut and bring the cable down to crimp it off, because it may be simpler for your access. Take the crimper and crimp off your ferrule. Five 30 seconds cables requires three crimps to maintain the strength of the cable itself. If you're using a multi-crimper like I am in this case, make sure you use the right slot or else it will not crimp completely. If you drop the cable, go get it. <laughs> cut the excess cable off. Make sure you cut off the correct side. And just for the sake of keeping your fingers from getting holes poked into them, I tape off this section replace the stud into the bracket
And at this point, you want to just basically snug it up to about finger tight because before we complete this, we want to check and make sure the cable alignment is proper at the bracket so we don't destroy or damage the new cable. So we want to relocate this bracket so we'll loosen the bracket screws up. In some cases, you may have to pull all screws out. They're all screwed in tight like that. And then raise the bracket to the proper level. And then re-secure the bracket. Now notice how the cable goes straight in without bending or kinking. That's what you want. At this point, take your vice grip pliers, clamp them on the barrel of your eye bolt, and readjust the system with your wrench. The way the AccuSlide system works, being that we're holding it from four corners, is when the room is fully either in or out, or past the center fulcrum point, the top will always seal better or easier than the bottom because the room wants to fall out naturally with the gravity. So it does not take as much force on top cables to get the room to seal. At that point, you put on your foam anti-vibration blocks and the job is done.